Hello and welcome to the Friday, December 16th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we got a malware analysis diary again by Brad, and Brad this time looks at how a Google ad led to an iced ID or a BarkBot infection. This is sadly still a very common theme where you are searching for some legitimate software and the top ad being displayed on Google is leading you to a malicious page. What makes it, I think, even worse is that when you see a paid ad like this, the URL displayed is something that the attacker may uh, pick. So this is not the actual URL that you'll end up at. Yes, I understand this may be a little bit uh, required because often ads lead you to some kind of click-through URLs and such, not to the actual company homepage. And uh, advertisers want to have their brand visible here in the link, but allowing advertisers to arbitrarily pick uh, the link being displayed of course leads to fraud like this and apparently Google uh, doesn't have much interest in blocking this because this is an issue that's going on for a few years now not sure uh, with Google now owning Mandiant if you get like a 10% off coupon if a Google ad did actually cause the compromise after the user does end up on the fake software page, in the case that Brad talks about its AnyDesk, uh, there is a zip file that's unavailable for download, which will expand to an MSI, so an installer file. And uh, once you install this, well, that's when you'll install the malicious DLL for Iced ID. All the packet captures and other artifacts can be downloaded and uh, you can sort of uh, reproduce some of the analysis that Pratt performed here. And Talos has an interesting write-up on a recent uh, QuarkBot uh, variant uh, that uh, takes advantage of SVG images. SVG images are an interesting format. It's a vector format, and the way you typically see them included on a web page is you see the SVG SVG tag, and then there is a path tag that pretty much literally has the coordinates that uh, make up the image. And then there are lines being drawn between these coordinates. The advantage is that it scales, so you can easily uh, increase and decrease the size of the particular image. But uh, with it being essentially uh, HTML, there is an option also to include additional HTML and even JavaScript in these SVG blocks. And that's apparently what QuarkBot here takes advantage of. To make things more interesting, this all is then also encoded in a data URL uh, to make analysis even a little bit more difficult. And uh, well, the end result is that uh, these attacks are able to bypass some filters. And GitHub today announced a couple initiatives to improve uh, the security of GitHub repositories. First of all, you may now uh, have your uh, GitHub repositories scanned for uh, passwords and other credentials. These scans are free if you have a public repository. Of course, that's supposed to solve the problem where many of these repositories are including uh, passwords, in particular API keys uh, these days that are then uh, stolen. Also, through Throughout next year, uh, GitHub will roll out mandatory two-factor authentication. It'll start out uh, by March with sort of some select uh, groups, like, uh, for example, if you are uh, publishing uh, releases or uh, if you are an enterprise and organization administrator. But uh, by the end of the year, all GitHub users must use two-factor authentication. I think this may also... Uh, get uh, rid of some sort of the more spammy uses of GitHub, like we have seen, for example, phishing pages and such being hosted on GitHub, because it may break some of the automations that uh, these groups are using. 
And I'll talk about some of these sort of end of year things. Uh, we all know the SHA-1 algorithm has uh, sort of shown its age. It's no longer being used for a lot of uh, critical uh, security features. Like uh, there have been a couple of well-published uh, collisions uh, with SHA-1 already. NIST now makes it official that by the end of uh, 2030, so uh, you got, uh, what is it, like eight years, uh, you must uh, no longer use SHA-1. This, of course, really only affects uh, the federal government, but a lot of non-government entities sort of take their guidance from this. So uh, look for that. And if you have any software that still uses SHA-1, well, uh, really time to get started on converting to something else. And just quickly, we do have updates for uh, Google Chrome, Firefox, as well as for the Thunderbird uh, mail reader. Nothing overly severe, no zero days as far as I can tell. So, well, update at your convenience. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.